Okay, so in this video we're going to learn how to derive finite difference approximations to derivatives by using Taylor series expansions. So the idea is that we're going to take some point x and then we're going to add some spacing or some step size delta x to it and we're going to use the following infinite series to essentially find out what the derivatives are. So there are many ways in which we can do this but these are the two main formulas that we'll that we will use to build different finite difference approximations of different accuracies. So the first one here is for when we add the delta x step and basically we just have a, con a continuous positive series that basically increases in powers of basically delta x and it extends to infinity. Here we have a negative delta x in the argument of the function and what is happening is this actually becomes an alternating series. So the first term is positive, the second one is negative, the third one is positive, and so on. It keeps alternating sign. So let's say that we want to find out what a first order derivative is. So basically we want to isolate this term and find out how we can approximate it using any of those combinations. So one of the things one might think to do is, well, how about we do the following? Let's say we take this term. Let's take this term, and essentially we want to get rid of all the terms that precede this first derivative. So the term that precedes it is f of x. Now that's just the value of the function itself. So if we want to get rid of that, all we need to do is subtract f of x from both sides. So we do the following. We subtract f of x from that, and then we basically get rid of that. And in this side, we're going to have delta x times f prime of x. And then we're going to have a bunch of terms here, delta x squared to, prime, to factorial f double prime x, and then this keeps going. But remember, we only want the first derivative. So now what we can do is we can group all these extra terms, and we can say that they're going to be equal to some term, which is essentially a big O of delta x. Now, what, what does this actually mean? Well, I'll show you what this means in a second. Essentially, we're truncating this series. We're doing something called truncation. Truncation essentially means that you're taking an infinite series and then you're just removing a whole bunch of stuff because you're only interested in this value. You're not really interested in the higher order derivatives. And basically, you can tell that because if you choose a small enough step size, as the power of the step size increases, these terms become a lot smaller. So they can become essentially negligible as long as delta x is very, very small. So this is what truncation is all about. Now what is going to happen is you're going to express f of f prime x. You're just going to solve for it by dividing both sides by delta x. So we're going to have the following. So let's first divide by delta x. So we're going to have f of x plus delta x here minus f of x over delta x equals to f prime of x plus now remember we're dividing everything by delta x so this is going to reduce in power this is going to become delta x to the power of 1 then the second one which is delta x to the power of 3 is going to become delta x to the power of 2 over 3 factorial f triple prime and so on so this is what I mean by truncation we're essentially taking these whole terms, we're replacing them by a single kind of symbol, this quantity here. This is sometimes called big O notation. What this means is that the sum of all these terms is going to be in the order of accuracy of delta x. And the reason for that is that the leading term in this part of the series is a delta x to the power of 1. So the accuracy of this finite difference is going to be given by this order of magnitude. So we can rewrite this in the following way. We can say f of prime x is approximately equal to f of x plus delta x minus f of x over delta x. And then the the Actually, the, ac the accuracy of this approximation is going to be given by this quantity. Now, we don't know what this quantity is, but I can tell you that it is going to be something like this. Suppose that you choose a step size of delta x 
equals to 0 0.1. Assuming that's your step size, the error in this finite difference is going to be of magnitude 0 0.1. So that's what it essentially means. So let's say that you calculate some number here. You calculate a number like, let's say, f of x plus delta x in, in the next step is something like 0 0.5. Then the error in this would be 0 0.1. So you can see it's quite large. If you consider that your step size is not small enough, obviously you would need to make it a lot smaller in order to reduce the amount of error in it. This is not a direct quantity that tells you the accuracy but it tells you the order of magnitude of that error in the approximation so that's a way in which we can quantify how accurate our approximation is <coughs> and we can do the same kind of thing for the backwards difference so basically imagine you take this what you would essentially do is you would take this term subtract f of x from it and then solve for f prime x and obviously it would become the following and I recommend you try and do that using that series you know that the backwards difference is going to be approximately equal to f of x minus f of x minus delta x over delta x and you will notice that the accuracy or the truncation error is going to be exactly the same as the forward difference so there's really no advantage to using one over the other they're pretty much the same method now, how about we try to increase the accuracy of our solution? Let's say we wanted to make this order of magnitude a lot smaller. Well, there is a way in which we can do that, and one way is to derive a central order difference, so a central difference scheme, by taking a point that is halfway between those two. So what do I mean by that? Well, what we're going to do is the following. Let's say we add this to that. So let's say, let's see what happens in that case. Let's add f of x plus delta x plus f of x minus delta x equals to the following. Well, we can see, well, that wouldn't be very helpful, right? Because if we add the two together, well, this becomes two f of x, but then look at what happens. We have plus and minus here. This term will cancel out, so we can no longer solve for the first derivative, which is what we're interested in this case. So we cannot really do that. So how about we, instead of adding them, we subtract this from them, so that this sign here becomes positive. So how about instead of adding them together, we subtract this one from the other, and then what's going to happen here is, well, these two terms are going to cancel out. That becomes zero. This is going to become 2, two delta x f prime of x. That's the first term. Now let's look at the second term. Well, we notice that if we subtract this from that, these two terms are going to cancel out. So the next term in line will be this one. We have plus, minus, minus. This becomes plus. So we have plus 2 delta x cubed over 3 factorial of f triple prime x and then this is this power is going to keep repeating so we notice that all the even powers of delta x are going to cancel out so this is what we're left with here now what we need to do is we need to solve for f prime of x to find the first derivative so divide both sides by 2 delta x so we're going to get f of x plus delta x here minus f of x minus delta x over 2 delta x is going to be equal to f prime of x and now look at what happens we divide this by 2 delta x so the one of them cancels out so we're left with delta x squared over 3 prime f triple prime x plus and so on so on so basically now the leading term in this extra bit of stuff is going to be of the order of magnitude of delta x squared so the truncation error is now in terms of delta x squared rather than delta x and is this an improvement in terms of accuracy well it is because imagine that your delta x is something like 0 0.1 then that means that your truncation error in this case is going to be in the order of magnitude of 0 0.1 squared which is 0 0.01 so you can see this is much smaller than this so this 
accuracy, the, the accuracy of this approximation is going to be much better than the ones for the backwards or forward difference schemes. So this is the whole idea behind uh, deriving finite differences based on Taylor series expansions. So in the end, we can write this central difference approximation as f of x approximately equal to f of x plus delta x minus f of x minus delta x over 2 delta x and it has a truncation error of O delta x squared so it's much more accurate than the forward or central difference schemes so that is it that is all we needed to know now there is a fundamental issue with this one and there is a reason why we don't always use it in numerical solution to differential equations so here is the issue that I'm going to point out and this is, you might think, oh, well, this is just wonderful. We can improve the accuracy simply by adding more terms. So you could basically shift this around, take, say, 10 points around some central point, and then add up the Taylor series, and then you could get, eventually, you could get infinite accuracy in your approximation. That's all good and well, but here's the problem. You're going to start off at some point. Let's say you want to calculate the next point in the sequence, right? This is f x plus delta x. Okay? This is going to be f of x. And then this other point here is f x minus delta x. So suppose you, you write an equation in terms of x plus delta x. Now, when you put it in there, you're going to have to give the value of x minus delta x. That's going to be your initial value, your initial condition. And this is going to give you this value. Well, that works fine. Now, what happens when you go and get the next value? Here's where the problem starts to appear. This is going to be 2 delta x. This is going to require you to know this value here. Now, if you don't give it this value, you cannot act <coughs> you essentially cannot calculate this. You might be able to calculate the next value in line, f of x plus 3 delta x because you already found what this is, so you can find this one, but then you run into the second problem that all the points in between, you will not know unless you also give it the value of this function. Now, you might say, well, that just means you need to put two initial conditions in there, but think about it this way. When you're solving a differential equation that you don't know the solution to, when you're solving a differential equation that has no exact solution and you're, rec you're resorting to a numerical method to solve it instead, why would you ever know two of the initial values? I mean, obviously, this is just a parameter. You give it an initial value, like let, let's say the initial value of the population. That's just a number that you choose. You choose that number in order to calculate the solution. But why would you ever know the next value in the sequence? I mean, if you know the next value in the sequence, you would already know what the function looks like. So you would already technically know the solution before you even solve it. So in physical terms, in practical terms, this never happens. So this kind of, this approximation does not work in practical terms because it requires us to know more information than realistically we would be given in um, to begin with in the problem. So this is where reality crashes with theory because in theory we can make these approximations as accurate as we want if we t keep taking more and more points. But in practicality we cannot do that because we're not really given enough information to do that. So we're always limited to reasonably inaccurate schemes. So the only way in which we can improve the accuracy of our numerical solutions is by decreasing the step size. So the step size is usually going to be something like like 10 to the minus 10 or something like that. That's a reasonably good step size. But the problem with this is that, of course, remember, you're using a computer to solve this. And computers have limited hardware. So if you're using a very small step size, computers will essentially limit how good your approximation is going to be, depending on how much hardware it has to compute the solution. So in the next video, we're going to talk about how to derive second-order derivatives or second-order finite differences using the same kind of method that we use here. And we're going to discuss a little bit more about what accuracy means and what truncation error is and what the limitations of some of the higher-order accuracy schemes 
are in terms of practical application.